Hey everybody, this is James from All Outdoors, and today we'll be having a look at a North American Arms Mini Revolver. This particular one is chambered in 22 Magnum, and it is definitely not the first NAA Mini that you've seen on my channel. I've owned several different versions of this particular gun. Uh, this one has a 1 and 5 8 inch barrel. Uh, other than that, it's just your base Magnum Mini Revolver. And I've put about 500 rounds to this particular one. I wanted to give you all my impressions, some tips and tricks on how to deploy these, and how this gun once saved my bacon. Now on paper what we have is a true pocket pistol and a very old west style, but in stainless steel. But otherwise, the North American Arms is a single action revolver that requires the gun to be assembled and reassembled in order to load and unload the gun. Uh, the gun holds five rounds of ammunition and you load and unload by bringing the hammer to the half cock position. Uh, the half cock also helps in which when you go to cock the hammer and your thumb slips, the gun will not discharge, it will just fall right back into that half cock. But to get the gun to half cock, you just bring it back to the halfway part, clicks, and then you pull out your cylinder pin, roll out the cylinder, then you load in your five rounds. Now you're ready to shoot, but to make the gun safe, you can index the hammer into one of the safety notches in between chambers so that the hammer isn't resting on a live round when you go to carry the gun around so you can have all five rounds loaded and ready to go. Of course the gun is single action meaning the hammer has to be cocked at each and every shot. There is no other way to get this gun to go off except to intentionally thumb back the hammer all the way and press the trigger. Unloading requires that you take out the cylinder once again, take out your cylinder pin, and use the cylinder pin to punch out your empties. There isn't too much when it comes to the features on this particular gun. Uh, that is exactly how you load and unload it. It's very simplistic, and you have five rounds to uh, get the job done with, and that's really it. Other than that, you have a bird's head rosewood grip that you can get a finger on, and a front sight that you really just have the front sight blade and no real rear sight. And fully loaded, the gun comes in at 7 ounces, which is about half the weight of a small sub nose revolver. Here is my Smith & Wesson 442 being weighed up, as well as my Ruger LCP, a typical 380 micro size pistol. And you can see that the Mini is definitely more convenient than these two to carry. Um, I definitely like to use this one as a gem type of carry gun and a belly band holster, on occasion a pocket holster. And I definitely, it definitely works well for me. The dimensions are small enough to where I don't have to worry about it digging in to me when I'm doing strenuous physical exercise. I've tried that with those other guns and it hasn't worked out so well for me. Now those shrunk dimensions do make it easy to carry, but on the other hand make it hard to shoot and get it out in a hurry especially. I have a couple of tips and tricks in order to get this done, uh, but I'm not denying that if you're using one of these guns as a self-defense option, you definitely are working behind a deficit and it's worth getting some practice out of this little gun in order to make that up. Now the Mini does come from the factory with that rounded bird's head grip. It doesn't prey on clothing at all um, and you can get bigger grips, but if you're going to get a bigger grip, that is going to increase the footprint of a particular gun, so you might as well carry something heavier. So with that said, I stuck with the uh, rosewood grip, and the way I draw the gun, I draw and my middle finger finds the edge of that rosewood grip and wraps around it, and that's how I get a good hold on the gun. Otherwise, that's about as best you can do. In terms of gripping and firing, I try to shoot two-handed because once you actually get the gun out and you try to cock with one hand, shoot with one hand, um, for every shot your um, your index finger is wanting to find a place for leverage in order for you to lift the gun up and recock the hammer for leverage, but there's no trigger guard on, on the gun in order to do that. So I find it actually easier to get two hands on the gun whenever possible in order to basically hold on with one hand while the other cocks. But of course, shooting fast doesn't matter if you can't actually hit anything. No one ever claimed that the Mini is a target gun, but I think it's a lot more capable than what you would expect beyond just contact, get off me, gun type of distance. For those of us who actually expect to do something reasonable with these guns, the Mini can still deliver. 
But probably the hardest part that makes guns like these hard to shoot, besides the grips, are the sights themselves, or the lack thereof. Now your base meter revolver is going to have a front sight and no real rear sight, and it can be tricky to line up that front sight, even though it's very easy to see just pointing and indexing the gun out. Uh, some right, minis a require a very my fine bead with top this, strap um, of GoPro. the receiver um, the can, bearing down I, uh, target, on the front sight, whereas this particular one, I actually prefer an upside down T and, uh, sight picture in which we'll the do, bottom of the group. top strap is level with the bottom of the uh, front sight, and the top of the front sight is basically indexed where you want the bullets to go. It is a precision but it can be understood very well but once you get those um, fundamentals down on how you, exactly how you line that side up you can get some pretty good hits on target now there are some obvious problems and some more nuances when it comes to using one of these as a self-defense option which I imagine most people would want to get some of this for as a last ditch backup to backup time of option um, of course there's ammunition selection using 22 long cylinders and so among other things that we could accurate, address that we're not uh, going to, the uh, is, but there are two that I want to talk about very briefly, and one is disassembly, so, and the other is the issue of tumbling fire. bullets. Uh, but the trick on this actually isn't too bad. You have a little spur trigger. Now I've had so, about 500 rounds for this particular mini revolver, and it's ran flawlessly. Not a bad trick. I've run over a thousand rounds out of some other mini revolvers over the years too, and they ran pretty well as well. Field stripping for normal cleaning is pretty straightforward, and being stainless steel, it is very easy on neglect. But taking the North American Arms Mini Revolver apart um, is an entirely another matter. You can get it apart pretty easily, but getting it back together with all its small parts and small, hard to compress springs is an entirely different matter. The first time I did it, it ended up in a box and had to be sent over to North American Arms for uh, reassembly. And North American Arms, in fact, does not recommend disassembly of the gun. And without some specialized tools and know-how, I definitely wouldn't recommend doing it. And that's definitely a, can be a deal breaker if you actually intend to shoot this gun quite a bit and get some good practice in. Because gunk does build up over time underneath that side plate, and you will need to hose it out from time to time. Uh, but leaving that particular side, the biggest issue I ever have with North American Arms mini revolvers in my years of shooting them hasn't even been that. Um, but it actually has something to do with with the phenomenon called keyholing. See notches here. Now keyholing happens with rimfire you guns just, uh, and with these North American arms mini revolvers from time to time Press in the which uh, these forward. really short barrels sometimes don't go. stabilize a regular weight uh, 22 so, long uh, rifle with 22 magnum ammunition targets, and you'll sometimes yeah, find them uh, printing sideways well, instead of straight at on at into a target. Now, so and that kills accuracy that. and it doesn't do anything worthwhile to the target and uh, that has been excused when I've uh, brought this up. Uh, but there is no excuse for it. Now, this usually happens occasionally with some brands. Um, wow. Some will keyhole more than others. Uh, oh, but generally, if this. you can this avoid one particular type of ammunition, uh, that solves the issue. But wow. um, with some North American Arms mini revolvers, I've actually had it to where it would not shoot any ammunition at all accurately, and it would just reliably keyhole, making the gun essentially useless. Now when there's no ammunition at all that won't hit properly uh, with any gun, it's probably the gun and not the ammunition. And I discovered early on with these North American Arms mini revolvers that it wasn't the barrel length but the muzzle crown or lack thereof. Now at the muzzle you need a recess where the rifling ends and the atmosphere begins. Uh, you need a clean break uh, for, for the gases that are escaping, otherwise if it's built up on one side and not the other, you could have that round just uh, pushed sideways to the target. Um, you know, it, it happens very, very quickly, but unless it's uniform all the way around, you could have that happen. Now, um, when you look at the muzzle of some of these guns, you'll find that sometimes there isn't a muzzle crown at all. Now, a few minutes with a chamfering tool or a brass screw dipped in epoxy can lap out any burrs and establish a crown. But no gun should ever leave the factory like this, and with these North American Arms guns, uh, they leave the factory quite a lot like this. So based on that, uh, you would think that I wouldn't like North American Arms mini revolvers, but I clearly do. I like this particular one, and I've liked a lot of the ones that I've had in the past. 
Um, I don't think this particular one will be sticking around. I have a soft spot for these guns, and the part of that might be up. because Recall a gun like eyes. this Got saved my bacon one summer night in Daytona Beach, Florida. Interesting. That's a really cool little handgun. Daytona Beach, Florida, you say? Did it have something to do with bikers or sun-dried ladies? No. This was a road rage incident, and that's how I'm going to explain what happened. You see, at the time, I live in an apartment not too far from the beach, and for those of you who've lived near uh, water in particular, you know that it wreaks havoc on uh, appliances, especially electronic parts, and um, a lot of apartment units near the beach, they didn't have washer-dryer units, and oftentimes you'd have to go to a dedicated laundromat in order to wash and dry your clothes. And that's basically what I did every single weekend. I hitched a ride and we basically washed our clothes and that's, that's basically what happens every single weekend for me and there's nothing unusual about that particular weekend when this road rage incident happened but what had happened was I had um, basically am I am now of course I was in a much larger car and um, this is also at the time when I didn't have a concealed carry permit I usually would bring my little mini revolver with me if I was ever to be on the road for something I usually would have it in the glove box like so we can argue tactics but this was a different time, and I was a different person, so there is that. But in any case, I had my freshly laundered clothes in between my legs in a hamper, and we had approached the stoplight um, that was ahead of us. It was actually the last stoplight before we had reached home, and uh, there were some cars ahead of us, and of course they had stopped, so we're not going to be first in line. And then all of a sudden, when we were starting to slow down, there was a, a guy on a red pickup truck, he cut us off, almost hitting us now, to get right in front of us, and then he stopped. And then the person in the driver's seat went ahead and honked the horn. Now, that isn't a particularly good idea because you could be provoking that other driver into a response. Now, this is meant to actually alert someone in case there's a problem, but a lot of people use it as a form of punishment to punish other drivers. And I was thinking, oh, that's not a good idea. But usually nothing ever comes of it, but this time it did. So what happened was we all came to a dead stop because the light had turned red and cars started coming up behind us so there was no way for us to back out or back off to the side or whatever. And what had happened was the guy got out of the truck and he, was, he got into the bed of the truck and picked up a 2x4 and he started advancing on us. So I figured, oh crap, this isn't going to be a good idea. So what I went ahead and did is I reached down, got my mini out of the glove compartment, I basically just put it over the um, over the, the dashboard to where he could see it. Now I wasn't aiming at him, I didn't cock the hammer, I didn't catch him in my sights or anything uh, glorious like that. Uh, I just waited to see what would happen, but he saw me and I saw him, we locked eyes I believe in that particular moment. And he got into his truck, dropped the 2x4 on his way as he did, and when the light turned green a moment later, he was out like a shot, and we basically uh, beat a tactical retreat back to our home. So that's exactly what happened. Uh, you know, no shots fired. That's very typical in a self-defense situation involving a gun. Very typical. And, um, you know, with a little North American Arms mini revolver, uh, you could say that was the perfect gun for me then. But, hey, no, um, you know, it did its intended purpose at the time. Um, but I have to say, uh, my particular experience with that particular type of gun it definitely molded my experience to make me think these things aren't useless and um, in, in any case if you do have to fire the gun as five shots that's not too bad and you definitely could have it with you when you need it so I hope you found that to be entertaining not too draining and maybe a little bit more informative well with that said I'm gonna turn on the car it's getting hot I'm uh, sweating my ass off in this thing and uh, well I'll see you next time I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching.